Welcome back my dogged contenders. Today we are tackling one of the most iconic bosses from Dark Souls 3, with possibly the greatest cutscene dialogue and largest lore set of any boss. Prince Lothric and Lorien are the ultimate dream team, and it's been one I've very much been looking forward to printing and painting. So let's jump straight in. And engage in jolly cooperation. Oh dear. Another dogged contender. So here they are, the two brothers. Epic in skill set, epic in stature, and all round epic boss fight. You've got fire, magic, resurrection, and generational family trauma. What more could a guy ask for? So my overall plan is to create a flame effect that cascades down the sword and spills onto the body of the model. Using a different technique to that which we did for Yorm last week, we'll still be using the airbrush but using brighter acrylics instead of using contrast paints. So we're going to attempt to bring in the light from the top and work our way down transitioning to darker tones toward the bottom. First things first, we need to get this bad boy primed. With a combination of Chaos Black at the bottom and Grey Sear at the top, we have enough shading here to work with for some contrast paints. Spraying on some contrast colours onto the cloak over the primer here should give us a good base colour to work with and immediately bring out some coloured highlights and shadows. So I'm just going to brush off any dust that might be on here, oh. careful not to drop him. Don't want a repeat breakage this week. Now to line up the paints. We're going to be using dozens of colours for this model as there are so many different parts to focus on. Starting off with a base layer of shyish purple, which is a great contrast paint and will be great for the younger prince's cloak. So you can see as this is being sprayed on, you're getting a nice even distribution of colour that's reacting differently to the two separate primer colours. With a quick colour change we're moving on to highlights with Nagaroth Knight. From a higher angle I'll be spraying on these lighter shades to higher parts of the model to give that nice light source effect. looking into more of the lore behind these two, the reason for Lorien's non-working legs and inability to speak is due to the fact he allowed his soul to be fused with his weaker brothers in order to strengthen him enough to link the first flame as their family had intended. But together they rejected this fate set before them. You could honestly write a book on just these two alone. Anyway, for Lorien's cape, we are using a base of Leviathan Blue, another awesome pigment of contrast paint. With the cloth covered in the first coat, I'm moving on to the Royal Blue colour in Cantor Blue. This will be to bring out some of the stronger blue pigment and highlights. To further enhance this royal blue colour and add some brighter highlights, I'm using Thousand Suns Blue, a fitting paint name for these two I feel. So just keeping that needle closer to the areas I want to highlight, focusing on the more raised parts and gently applying a thin highlight layer. Peel off the protective masking tape we applied earlier to stop any blue contacting the purple cloak and we're ready for the next part. My favourite contrast paint, Basilicanum Grey will make a great base for the sword. So, with a layer brush, just apply a good first coating to the sword. For the underparts of Lorien's armour, it seems to have a reddish hue, so I want something that's not going to stand out too much from the blue. Word Bearer's Red is a nice burgundy browny red colour that will sit nicely under the armour without being too brash. I'm using my Windsor & Newton Series 7 brush here, as it has a nice thin tip and can get a good amount of controlled paint distribution, and just carefully apply a base layer to all the cloth parts that sit beneath his armour. With that done, we're painting the first layer of Lorien's armour. With a dry brush and some Rune Lord brass, apply a thin layer to all the armour plates. This brass colour as a base will give us that nice metallic look, but with a more brown hue rather than silver, which seems to be closer to his armour shade in the game. Welcome, unkindled one. The herd winner of Cinders. Now the 
first coat is done, I'm applying a wash over it with a 50-50 mix of Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium. This will allow the contrast to dip into all those little areas creating shadows, but with the Contrast Medium thinning it, it won't overpower any of the colour of the Rune Lord Brass. wash applied and dried, I'm going to be using Canoptech Alloy to dry brush on some highlights to the armour plates. This will also help to add some of the metallic glimmer to the armour, but also in keeping with the brass tones of the base coat. I'm also going to dry brush on an even lighter coat of Necron compound in certain areas that I want more highlights. The crown to me looks more golden than the rest of his armour from reference pictures that I've dug up online, so I'm going to be using a base of Retributor armour. I'll also be using the same paint to add some edge detailing to Lothric's cloak as he appears to have golden decals on it. Apparently once their souls were fused together, Lorien could not die unless Lothric did, which makes sense in the game that Lothric can keep reviving Lorien over and over until you finally kill him, finally letting them both die. Here I'm adding on a layer of Flesh Terror Red to the innermost parts of the Under Armour, just to add an extra layer of shadowing. It's hotting up in British summertime so I have to fork over the long sleeve. We're now moving on to Lorien's hair, which is a sort of weathered dull blonde tinge. Using a technique I learnt from the lovely people in Games Workshop, I'm applying a base coat of Wraithbone to all parts of the hair, which will act as the first coat for our next contrast paints to sit nicely on. A mix of the and Yellow Contrast and some Contrast Medium will be a nice wash to go over the Wraithbone to act as the main hair pigment. The Contrast Medium will dull down some of the vibrant yellows as he isn't the most bright looking blonde. Using different brown and yellow tones between Ashbati Bone, Avalon Sunset and Zandri Dust, I'm going to go over the strands of hair, picking out different parts to add shade and highlights to, to add some dynamism to the hair. For his skin, I'm applying a base of Wraithbone again. These two don't have the most flush of cheeks, so it's a good base coat to start with. On a wet palette, I'm adding some Kislev Flesh and making sure I'm thinning it down. This will bring in some of the flesh tones to the Wraithbone base, and I'll apply it to most of the face. Adding more to the darker layers under the lip, cheekbones, eyes, and beneath the crown and hair. Moving down the tone list in flesh tones, I'm using Cadian flesh tone to go over the more shadowed regions to bring out more colour. And then repeating the same process with the even darker rat skin flesh, just keeping it to the darkest parts of the face. For Lothric's face and skin, he is much paler and weaker than Lorien, so to reflect that I'm going to be mixing in some Celestra Grey to the flesh tones on the wet palette. With the same process as Lorien's skin, just working in some of the highlights and dark shades across the skin with more of the grey tone mixed in, should give him more of a lifeless skin tone. over some of the parts inside the hood you may have accidentally coloured in, just go over it with some Abaddon Black. Now for the tricky parts, something I'm slowly improving on as I go, the fire effects. Starting off with the base of Korax White into the airbrush and just spraying over the areas of the sword and the cloaks that I would see the flame effect sitting on. Now this time we aren't using contrast paints, but instead using normal acrylics. The first layer of Mephiston Red will sit as the furthest colour from the centre of the flame. Mm -hmm. 
Then repeat a smaller halo of white more centrally inside the red. And then add a more concentrated layer of Troll Slayer Orange over the top, creating the gradient. Repeat the white halo again and even smaller and more central. Then add in the final colour which is Flash Glitz Yellow, which is a very vibrant yellow, something I feel was missing from Yorm's last paint job. This time round is definitely more vibrant and more powerful of an effect, but I have a feeling I went too strong with it this time to compensate. Well, you live and you learn. So, to add back in some of the darker details, I'm going to go back over the sword with some Basilicanum Grey and also to parts of his armour. Finally, in true fashion with the Souls community, I'm finishing with the feet. So, with the pigments from earlier with the grey and skin tones, I'm just finishing off this model by filling in Lothric's little hidden feet. And there we have them, the Lords of Cinder, brothers in arms, bound for eternity. Thanks very much for tuning in everyone, I appreciate each and every one of you. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed today's video, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Also head on over to the Instagram channel to check out all the latest models. And until then, see you next time.